We don't do that here. But the Week two of the ultimate FN casual for this review block, anyway. I don't think any news came up so far. I hope not. Mm, but let's get into still, it. Still, still no, yeah, no crazy news. Yeah, nothing, nothing, nothing major, big. I think. But I'm also not very good at keeping up with the news. A lot of MMA news these days is like just rumors and ah. hearsay and we really don't get stuff until we actually hit a major card and that's when the ufc likes to do their news dumps mm -hmm. well we got one coming up so that's fun can't be here soon enough we need it <laughs> uh, all right let's get some reviews out of the way on tuesday august 27th week three of the contender series um, I'm trying to think. I don't think I watched these, but there were some stoppages on there if you want to, if you want blood. And one Friday Fights 77 on August 30th. There were some excellent ones here. These ones I did go check out a few. Oh, man. Uh, Omar Quinte, KO3 over Pets and Chai. This was Fly Muay Thai Flyweights, and Omar was losing until he won kind of situation. Not sure what they told him in the corner coming out into round three, into the last round, and the, the, he turned it up, and it was good. It was a good win. Uh, another one is Imad Sali versus Arashi Sakamoto, KO2. This was a catch weight. I'm not sure what the what the situation is on the weights that they decide because they get some odd ones, but whatevs. That was an, another really fun one, and there are plenty of others. This one's worth checking out. And that's it. Wow. Bleak. Preview time. Holy shit, we're already here. Uh, week five of the Contender Series. Uh, looks like there's some good stuff on here. Good records on this one as well. Phil Latou versus uh, Francesco Mazzeo. Light heavies. I thought that said heavy for a second. Man. Corinne Laframbois. Hey, these are some interesting names. Yeah. Yeah. The Frambois. I've never heard of that name before. It's French. What last name? Uh, oh, the knockout must be, not be that fun to watch then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, La Framboise. A Framboise, I think, a raspberry. Corinne the raspberry. That's a good one. Nicole Cagliari. Uh, there you go. There's but there's more on there, obviously, but it's the Contender Series, so it's kind of have to sift through the duds a little bit more than the... A li less than the Apex Fight Nights, but it's still can be it can be rough all right quickly uh bellator champion series in london at the ovo arena I'm trying to look if there's anybody other than the main event it doesn't look like it yeah i don't i don't recognize anyone either like non-main event we interrupt our program to bring you this important message Hey, as you may or may not have heard, the Eblen Edwards rematch was canceled a few days ago. It was canceled after we recorded, right? So we don't we didn't really have that info available to us. Truth be told, that was the only fight on the card that we were really going to talk about anyway. Uh, otherwise, we were just really grasping at straws before we moved on. Uh, say la vie. Johnny Eblen is rematching Fabian Edwards. Uh, man, hopefully Fabian can channel some winning ways and maybe hold the belt up in front of his brother and say, like, this is what <laughs> yeah. it looks like when you win, bitch. <laughs> um, this, could, this could be a bad, like, second half of the year for the Edwards if he doesn't win. That's a middleweight title fight, and there, um, there's other stuff on here. I honestly just don't know. I don't know enough about these i could ra i could name you plenty of random thai people but i don't know who these guys are <laughs> i don't know different strokes i guess and fortunately we, we don't know either we're <laughs> not we're all still too casual for this card yeah, yeah no kidding not too casual for ufc 306 at the sphere man this is a good card uh i don't there are other names that it has attached to it that i'm not calling them I'm not calling it that because it's really dumb. The Riyadh season, fucking nonsense. 
Riyadh sees in UFC yeah. or Nocha UFC. UFC yeah, Nocha UFC. UFC. At the sphere. Yeah. It's an Irish American. I saw this post. It was like, this is an Irish American fighting a Georgian for the Mexican Independence Day card that's being put on by the Saudis in the sphere. Are you hyped yet? <laughs> yeah. Dude, Mirav, like, he, I, I was seeing some videos where he was down in Tijuana, though. So, like, yeah, I, yeah, I, he, he's really leaning into the whole Mexican thing. He definitely is. He's an honorary Mexican. Although, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that or not. Uh, he's trying his best. Uh, he's doing it I probably in the name of promotion. But, nonetheless, it does seem like he's putting in the work. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see him walk out with a Mexican flag. Or, like, a half Mexican, half Georgian flag. Sombrero for sure. Yeah, it would be like Floyd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I know I know like the main, the co main and then like the the Ortega fight, Lopez. Those are the sort of the the fights that are being looked at. But there's actually some hidden gems uh within this card. Like we, we we'll get to the ones in the main card. But I, I just wanna highlight the uh Manuel Torres and Ignacio Bajamundes. That has potential to be fight of the night. Now, I know, I know me saying that will probably make it so it's some, like, boring fight. But, like, on paper, that is probably going to be a super exciting fight. Manuel uh, Torres is a pretty exciting fighter. Like, I've, I've yet to see a boring fight from him. Uh, he's fighting out of Mexico. And, man, he, he's a brawler, bro. He, he's straight dog. Edgar Chaitas and Yasmin Juaregui, those are also some exciting fighters, too. Uh, Irene Aldana sort of didn't show out too much. In the Amanda Nunes fight, but that should be a fight that RJ will enjoy. Probably, it's probably going to be, yeah. Yep. Especially with Norma Dumont. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the prelims are, are okay. And then uh, Raul uh, Rosas in the early, in the early prelims. prelims. I wanted to ask, like, that's kind of weird how they would put him there. Yeah, I don't know why it's only, I mean, I know it's 10 fights uh, only on this card, but it's sort of weird. Like, the early prelims are one singular fight. Yeah, I, I don't know how that worked out. Like, why didn't they couldn't just like stack it into the prelims? But maybe some ESPN thing. I don't know. Especially when the prelims are still going to be televised. It's all televised on. Well, I guess if it's an early one, are we saying does that ESPN mean that Rosas is not going to? Oh, I, yeah, that's like on Fight Pass, right? I think it's Fight Pass. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be like on on regular TV. That's cringe. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. Road yeah. Rosas is like they're trying to like build him up as a star so it's sort of weird or they have him at the top of the prelims now according oh to maybe ESPN, they switch it but I don't know, on the official Uf- on the official ufc ufc fight or ufc uh like display they have him at at the early prelims okay that's what i have up right now yeah fight pass that's unless like one. ufc just doesn't care and espn has the correct information this wouldn't be the first time yeah yeah. I took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, sorry, bro. Not sure why they're doing you dirty <laughs> like this, but... You might hear in the background my dog having a little coughing fit. I don't know if it's actually coughing, but that's what it sounds like. I've had her checked by a vet several times. She's fine. It didn't occur to me to mute my mic because I'm very good at this. All right, try to enjoy it anyway. It would be criminal if he was all the way down there and not like the cap to the prelims because like he is one of their young potential stars right yeah. like or at least someone they can build into a, a sellable contender so if they're like doing him dirty and he's like a fight pass only at what is that 4 30 in the yeah. afternoon like that's that's ridiculous yeah no one's gonna no one's gonna be able to watch that i mean we'll be able to see highlights i guess but i don't even know where that. to get fight pass to be honest with you i could figure it out but like it's not ever something of it's not something I've ever looked into. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think normal UFC fans have. I mean, I don't, I don't have that. I, I enjoy watching the UFC a lot, but I, I don't have that either. That would be just like Dana to, like, this is his way of showing his love to the Mexican fan base on Mexican Independence Day is putting the most well-known Mexican fighter on Fight Pass exclusive, and not anywhere near the main card. But, yeah. Fight Pass would be cheaper it. than uh, pay per view, though. Well, yeah, yeah but luckily it's not pay per view. He should be, yeah, he should be on the TV. He should yeah. be on the, yeah, or most. I, I don't know what it is. See him. It, it must be like an ES, like unless it is really just the UFC like screwing it up. But I'm assuming it's like an ESPN like scheduling thing. I don't know, like with the prelims, 
Uh, but it, it it is sort of like screwed up. I don't, he's the only slot two. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Normally they have like two or three fights yeah. on the early prelims. Yeah, typically. But uh, I I don't know if I've ever seen like a singular one scheduled for the early prelims. It, it, it is a bit weird. Uh, Ori Chileng is the Mongolian murderer. Uh, God, a, what what a nickname! That's a bear. what a nickname. That he's is Chinese. Intense. And he's, <laughs> he's Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's, like it's the Mexican, uh, they don't give a fuck in China. Maybe it's the northern yeah. part or something. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Let's. Uh, Rumors move. are his great grandfather built the wall, <laughs> <laughs> and that's where he met his great grandmother. She was on the other side of it. That's where the Mongolian part comes from. Completely made up. Uh, all right. So out of the prelims, into the main card. Uh, Ronaldo Rodriguez versus Ode Osborne. Daniel Zaluber versus Esteban Ribovic. Uh, Brian Ortega, third at Feather versus Diego Lopez, 12th. Big fight. Big yeah. fight. Yeah, that's a big, that means a lot for the Featherweight division. Is And like, I'm, I'm hoping Diego Lopez had enough time to rest and recover after the last fight, but th this should still be an exciting fight regardless. We might see some high level, like, you know, grappling, scrambles. And uh, striking exchanges should be fun too. Both of these guys have a chin. Ortega came in overweight last time, right? That's how the yeah no, no. it was. Well, I don't he think he fought at all. In... This was the Danny Gay. The Danny Gay situation. Danny Gay. Yeah, yeah. It was more like he was supposed to fight Ortega, and then Ortega dropped out, and then someone else was supposed to fight him. I can't remember who. Um, and then that person was replaced by Danny Ige. So it wasn't that he came in, like, overweight. It was at, he was, like, they had to agree to a catch weight. So Yeah, and they were going to do 155. Yeah. Then, like, 160. I think it ended up, like, Brian Ortega had, like, he had some type of sickness where he, he wasn't able to cut. And then Danny Ige stepped in. But, I mean, at least we're getting it now. Uh, is Ortega uh, one of, is this another changing of the guard situation? He's been there for a while. I mean, it, it, it could be. It yeah, be, I, um... it, it does have the same feel as, like, I mean, I know the fighters are not in the same positions, but, like, O'Malley, when he fought uh, Piotr Jan, and it was, like, 12 versus 2 or something like that. So, if Lopez wins this fight, he is top 3 in the division, like, overnight. Th they will leap him yeah. as far as they can justify. I mean, he's immediately in title contention. And like all of his fights have been exciting too, so UFC might might just give him a nod. Well, I think uh, it's good. Most are. might end up getting the title, uh, depending on what happens with Taporia. Yeah, with Taporia and Max, maybe some other stuff. I mean, one forty-five is a little bit complicated at the moment. Uh, but th this this is this fight means a lot, uh, mostly for Diego Lopez, but Brian Ortega could also maintain his whole spot too. So for Lopez, would it be I, uh, fight Ortega? Let's say he wins, that puts him into the top three to five, and then what? Another top five win, and you're talking title shots, or? Well, I don't want to look at it too much because like he still has to win. But assuming yeah. he did, like it could be Volk. He could be Volk's comeback fight. Woof! Oh man, because it, it that's, that's a hard if, fight. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. either that or Volk waits and just fights the Taporia Max winner. And then Lopez, who would he? He'd probably have to fight someone lower in the rankings. Probably like an Arnold Allen or something oh, like man, that. that. That'd be, man, I like both guys a lot. Taporia Max loser versus Diego? Nah, I, I doubt they would give, they would do that. They would try to build him up. Maybe the winner between Mosfar and Aljo. Maybe that. Yeah, maybe. Because he does that, need think... to get the most for our fight back. Because that was his UFC debut. Yeah, I mean, there's a storyline that yeah. they could build. I mean, and that was... I, remember, I think I remember he almost submitted. Yeah. Or, or at least he had a, a threat, a submission threat against most for It was... That was for a, a, for a, a debut fight, that was really good, yeah. Yeah, I remember that being a big deal. Uh, that was a, the first UFC de debut person I've seen. I had seen at that point, so that's why I latched on to him. No, oh, yeah, and it was he's, a, he's an exciting fight. Yeah, it's a good fight. Comes in on a few days' notice, it gives Evloev a really hard time, and spit nothing but 
upward trajectory since then. Mm-hmm. So that's a good one to get back for Diego. At some point, they have that one in the pocket, at least. It's good to have options for him. Uh, co-main, Alexa Grasso, Valentina Shevchenko, run it back for the third time. Is this the third time? Yeah, this is the third time. <clears throat> the end of the trilogy. I don't, yeah, this this is probably the last time they'll ever fight um, each other, at least. I don't think it'll be like a Moreno and Figueredo situation. So, uh, Isaac, uh, what was your take on the second fight? Because I'm curious to hear how you thought that one shook out. Okay, so, okay, this, this is this is how I had it. So I, I did have Alexa Grasso winning three to two, but I fully, fully don't understand that 10-8. Uh, round or that 10 8 scorecard. I, I forget, I think it was round three or round four. Uh, it was one of I the later it, rounds, and it was a yeah. pretty solid Shevchenko round, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, the 10 8 w- was pretty bad. I had Alexa could also winning 3 2. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a close fight, but the 10 8 is what really soured everything. Like, it sort of like ruined everything, which is, I hope we get some good, good scoring this round. Because it, I mean, these like, these like sort of like dumb scorecards don't help either fighter. Like it ruined, like it ruined Valentina Shevchenko, and then you know obviously like Alexa Grasso, there was a lot of controversy in her win too. So it doesn't help anyone. So hopefully this 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 fight we get some pretty clear scoring and no controversy to finish. Yeah, I want to say when I watched the fight, I felt like Shevchenko was doing a better job but in the context of like what i thought the judges would score um i would the the longer that fight went on i felt like i was pulling for grasso more and i sort of felt like man there's an argument that that she won that and i can't remember was there like a slam or something that they gave her the 10-8 for was that the reason i think it was some groundwork and like she she was like getting some ground and pound in but it was not significant enough for a 10-8. Yeah, because I don't remember, like, I, I do remember being taken aback by that. I can't remember, like, some massive shot that, like, would have uh, justified that. that yeah, was I mean, part of the there, there was nothing. That they couldn't. Yeah, there, there was nothing to justify a 10-8. And, like, the whole argument is that, you know, without the 10-8, Shevchenko would have been the winner of that fight. Right, right. Um, But, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, like I said, this, this fight... There's none of that. Uh, we get some clear rounds, clear scoring, no robbery, uh, and we get an end to a trilogy. Because it, it, it has been like some fun fights uh, between them. I'm obviously pulling for for Garasso, but uh, I respect Valentina too. She she's been a dominant champion for a while. Yeah, I do. I do kind of lean Grasso's way too. Um, no disrespect to Shevchenko, but I, I have enjoyed the style clash between these two and so hopefully we get a, a blowout in this um not not in a one side away but just a, a, a an exciting Decisive. cap to this yeah an exciting definitive cap to this trilogy and hopefully one free of controversy because that would suck if there was another like some weird shady stuff going on and then yeah that's the only way, thing we remember these these fighters for this question yeah wins. Nah. yeah i'm excited to see how it plays out though because like the way the past two fights have played out is that Alexa Grasso has like the better boxing and she seems to have like a little bit more power that sort of bothers Valentina. But Valentina has like the better grappling and wrestling. And in the second fight, Alexa got like a little bit better, but I mean, she still got taken down uh, a few times. So, I mean, I'm excited to see like what they've improved and, you know, what they, you know, what they, wh- wh- what they're going to have in store. Like that's a surprise for the for their opponent, for both of them, I guess. But yeah, it should be a fun fight. What are the chances Diego Lopez, after his fight, stays out to coach Grasso like he does at, in camp? Dude, if, if he has like an easy fight, or if he doesn't get like super like damaged, I, I would not be surprised if we see him out there uh, helping Alexa Grasso. Yeah, goes back and washes up, and then comes back yeah that would be no, he should just stay in that would be legendary. Just stay in uniform that would be even more inspiring keep the gloves just no on shirt too. yeah <laughs> gloves on no shirt <laughs> um, 
Oh, he right. like tag team tag teams him in when she's <laughs> losing. Like it's a pro wrestling <laughs> bit. Yeah. Anything more for the co-main? All right. Nope. Sean O'Malley defends his title against Mexican Marab Valishvili. Good times. Yeah. I'm not too sure what to make of Marab because I haven't. I don't know if I've seen him. Did I see him fight Cejudo? Yes, I did. I yeah. Think. I, I I'm not. I'm honestly not sure. Like I I could see either person winning, and like. I, I could see Sean winning by KO. I could see Marab winning by just like dominating Sean on the ground. I'm like really not sure how how this is gonna go. Like, I don't know what the odds are, but it should be a fun fight. Like, this is something like no one knows how this is gonna turn out. The odds, oh, it's a pick 'em. Yeah, it's one ten, one ten. The odds are the odds are even. Oh, okay, so yeah. Okay, yeah, so I, yeah. I'm I, I go back and forth on this fight. It's not an easy one to call. Um, I know we clowned on Aljo pretty bad when he lost to O'Malley and we were like, well, why didn't you just wrestle stupid? But the more I've like watched that fight and heard other people talk about that fight is O'Malley did a lot of things from range that kept Aljo from like actually closing the distance and at least even getting to the hips quickly. And then the two times he was on the cage, he stuffed the takedown and was able to reverse it. So obviously if O'Malley's able to keep him at range, every second is going to be like a massive amount of danger from Rob. So this fight comes down to, can he get this fight to the ground and avoid getting just sniped? But the way that we saw Marab ragdoll Aldo and Jan and Henry, Cejudo Henry. back to back to back, and I mean, like, the Cejudo one was so disrespectful. Like, he picked him up and then walked him over to where Mark Zuckerberg was and, like, waved at him and then yeah. slammed Cejudo on the ground. Like, this guy is insanely strong None and just really, really, really smart. Cejudo is not, like, a pushover on the ground. Either. He's a two-time, like, Olympic gold medalist in wrestling. And, like, Marab, mm -hmm. I mean, like you said, he, he ragged on him, like, slammed him down. He was able to pick him up and slam him down. Like, it's, I, I, I don't know, I feel like, both have pretty clear strengths uh, on the ground. Like, Maraba has pretty clear strength on the ground. Sean has a pretty clear strength uh, in the stand-up. Like, uh, this is, I mean, this is one of those, like, striker versus wrestler uh, matches. Mm -hmm. And then Marab has, like, insane cardio, too. Like, I mean, I feel like that's going to be a factor. I mean, Sean has never shown signs of, like, getting super, like, tired uh, in distance. Maybe, maybe in the Piotr on fight, like, slightly at the end, but uh, mm -hmm. nothing, like, catastrophic. I, I, I think this is going to be an exciting fight. It, it could end in 10 seconds. It could go the distance. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, we will, we will see what happens, but I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the, the, the fact that O'Malley carries his power all the way into the end of the mm -hmm. fifth round, he could knock him. He could lose four rounds and then knock him out in the fifth, but it's all going to come down to timing and distance, I think. I am kind of curious to see if Marab will try and strike because I know he he blended a lot of his wrestling with his striking against like Jan, and like do you remember when he went to go shake Jan's hand and Jan like flinched like he was punch shy or something after that fight? Do you remember that clip? Uh, I don't remember that. I watched the fight, it's a, but I, I don't recall it, it. It's a sad clip. It's really sad if you're a Piotr Jan fan, but uh, but yeah, he's got a he, he's you know one of these combat. Sambo guys. So, like, they are typically pretty good, like, you know, Islam Makachev, of combining their wrestling and their striking. So, I'm interested to see what approach he actually decides to take. Yeah. I don't think uh, it's going to be a pure, like, he's not going to, I don't know if he's going to shoot in the first 10 seconds and then just lay and pray. I think he's going to be a little more dynamic than that. Yeah. Marab is like, I mean, like you said, like the whole Sambo, like, pressure style. Like, they're always coming forward. Uh, one thing uh, about this fight is that like Sean, I mean, I mean, and Sean listens well, but like I don't know if it's him or his coaches. But so someone in his camp does like tape study pretty well, and Marab has has been caught and like hurt in the past, and like in the Cejudo fight, uh, he fought. There's that one clip that's been going around a lot about this fight, um, the Marlon Marias fight, you're getting caught by a hook and like repeatedly. I mean, if Sean lands that, I think Marab is unconscious. 
Um, and you know, Sean's got, you know, he's a distance fighter. He understands his range very well. His timing is nice. His boxing is, is crisp. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm excited. I mean, both, both of these people are smart when it comes to fighting, but if I was to choose one, I, I think I'd slightly favor Sean, but like, that's, that's a very like iffy answer that I'm, that I'm giving. Like, I, I'm not sure at all. But it, it, it will be exciting to watch. I think it actually be a pretty nice, like, technical fight, too. I'm curious. Uh, what happened? So Aldo versus uh, Marab was August 20th of 2022. Then March 11th of 23 was uh, Marab versus Jan. And he takes the rest of 23 off until he fought Cejudo in February of this year. Did he get injured or something? Or what happened? I think it's because he's on a win streak and like he was waiting to get a title shot. Oh, but they weren't giving it to him because I think he's like on a something like an 11 uh, fight win streak right now. It's, it's, it's something crazy. Yeah. And O'Malley got that like he shouldn't have gotten that fight against. Uh, oh, what's his name? The guy Vera, Vera Marlon. Yeah. They oh, got, yeah. They gave him yeah. the get back. That was really kind of like shitty to do to Marab because he was clearly the number one contender, and then they let him fight the number six ranked guy just so Sean could get his get back fight. So Marab was probably right to hold out and just say, "I'll wait for my title shot," because he's rightfully next in line here. Yeah, yeah, ten fight win streak. Yeah, he he, he should have been fighting a while ago for the for the belt. He's not been fighting bit, hands either. I mean, it's yeah, it's similar to uh, Shavkat Rachmanov, where he's on this insane win streak and he's not been promoted to title shot yet yeah i mean yeah we'll, we'll see yeah it's not a bad reason to hang around i guess compared to something else like i was worried that what if he's got injured or something well we, he has that cut yeah i mean that yeah viral. right right that's where i was going with it <laughs> is, the, is that a recurring <laughs> thing uh, not that i know of no i mean i imagine sean will We'll try to jab in that area, you know, just to try to open up something. But I mean, so I, is that right. like a blatant, like, hey, I've got an excuse just in case? Because there's no reason to post that cut. I'm, I'm only to say, well, hey, like when I got split open in the first, you guys obviously saw that happen in training camp. You know, it's sort of an unsaid uh, uh, thing. I don't know. That's how it comes off to me, at least. It could have maybe worked, but he posted it, so now it doesn't work. Like, the, the fact that he posted it, I feel like, sort of ruins any credibility there. Because, like, if, you know, if you... I mean, what, what Dana White said about Marab doing that, it is true. Like, you're, you're showing your opponent, I have this weakness here that you can target. Uh, and he just put it out on his social media for everyone to see. So, but could I mean, that not be also a trap? Like, I oh, the, this cut, you want to go for that, don't you? Oopsie, I'm prepared for all that. I mean, yeah, maybe, uh, I don't know. I think Sean's a little bit smarter than, like, the tunnel vision on one area. Yeah. But, I mean, may maybe. I mean, maybe it is all mind games. I'm sure at the press conference we'll probably, we'll probably get some uh, mention of that. Maybe Sean trolling Marab over the cut. Yeah, uh, I expect. But, I don't know. I don't think it could really be an excuse. At least, at least I don't think so. Unless it's like, you know, within the first five seconds, it opens up and just yeah. like starts leaking. Yeah, it's one of those things where if we didn't know it happened and it just happened and then he comes out in the post-fight conference, it's like, oh, I was totally cut in training camp, guys. Like, you know how that stuff sort of plays. I would be like, okay, like, shut up. You're just making an excuse. But now it's sort of like he's, he he's, you know, throwing that out there just in, I don't know. It just seems like a just in case, but... As we were talking about it, I just remembered Alex Pereira didn't tell anyone he broke his toes. And then like a day after the fight, he posted the video of him resetting his pinky toe before the uh, before he fought. Uh, what's his face? Yuri? No, no, no. no. Uh, Jamal Hill. Jamal. Oh, yeah. Jamal Hill. Yeah, I forget. I think it might, it might have been that fight. It may, it may have been the Yuri fight. But well, he, he, he re -broke reset his, his toe. He, yeah, he, he did yeah. re-break his toe in the in the Erie fight. Yes, that yeah, I recall. That, 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 was, that was something to see, yeah. I'm trying to think if... I, if it was trying to set the excuse ahead of time, 
I understand the tactic, I suppose, to give yourself an out if you need it. But I would have, I don't know if, uh, you know, armchair analyst or whatever, but hold that back. And then afterwards, if you do have a problem with it, then you can say, I was cut the whole time. I, and here it is on social media. I didn't want to post it because I didn't want to seem like I was making excuses for losing. Yeah, see, that would have made more sense. That, that would have made way more sense. And I would have been, you know, if it was a case where in the first round, Sean split open Marab and, you know, a bunch of blood start, started seeping into Marab's eye and, you know, was blinding, you know, the left hooks. Uh, Mar you know, Marab couldn't see the left hooks coming in or right hooks coming in. Um, if it was something like that. And then he posted something online saying, you know, yeah, I had to get plastic surgery to, to fix this cut. I would actually have a little empathy, but uh, I mean, yeah, posting it before so it doesn't make sense. That's something you say. Yeah, I wouldn't have posted that ahead of time. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think Marab absolutely has passed the victory here, though. So, you know, he should he should really just be locked in, and you know, he he could he could definitely win. Hopefully, it's not like a Nate Diaz type cut. You look at him the wrong way, and the, the scar tissue just splits open. Yeah, that's yeah, what the, I was the worried Jorge about. The Jorge Lenar is special. <laughs> <laughs> Paper mache skin. <laughs> I'm kind of interested to see like what the gimmick is supposed to be with like like I know they like will put the human eyeball on the sphere and that's cool right mm -hmm. but like what are they gonna do what are they gonna put on that like surely it's not just the fighter headshot and that's it that'd be kind of right lame. yeah the way Dana White was trying to hype it up I'm expecting something big but if it ends up being like the normal uh you know tail of the tape on the, on the the inside of the sphere face-to-face -face billboard it's, shot yeah, it's gonna be a little bit lame like, i'm expecting like a bunch of like beautiful cinematics you know high level i mean he said it was that like, we spent like you know 18 million on production uh i'm expecting something big spent 18 million on production how much are you spending on your fighters salaries yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's why there's only 10 fights i would imagine oh my god yeah that's why there's like <laughs> barely two two and a half fights that are like actually worth selling a pay-per-view for yeah that's why the re uh you know turkey that's why turkey came in with those his whole riyadh season he, yeah he's it. all about the theatrics and pageantry god i really yeah. don't like him them having to lower the the ticket prices at the speed uh, <laughs> nice like to see. Very, 70 very nice percent to see. good yeah, stuff they started off like 3k and now, I mean, I, I don't know what they're at now, but I, I saw a while back they were they were like at seven hundred now for some seats. So, yeah, they, they they dipped tremendously. Yeah, I feel bad for the people who paid for it up front. No, I don't. Those guys are suckers. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you deserve, bitch. You want to pay for this garbage card? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, let me see here. What if they did? A gloved fist in a UFC glove on the sphere. Wouldn't be like a perfect one-to-one -one ball sphere shape, but kind of kind of could fit. Oh, like make the the sphere like project the 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 fist. Uh, yeah, a fist in a UFC glove. That would be cool. I think it would look like sort of. I, I don't know if they can make it work. Like I feel like it would be distorted, but yeah, it'd be a I don't little know. off. They spent they spent you know millions of millions in production, so perhaps. They will have something they should way. they should if there's like oh here if marab's cut like breaks open really bad they should just max that out across the sphere <laughs> and put that on the outside <laughs> so people can just see this huge huge gaping cut. marab's dome on the yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a, like a body jack type cut just like shown on, on the sphere uh well you know they could probably pull out uh, jamal khashoggi's hand and use that to measure for the projection <laughs> uh, or or they could make the sphere the herb dean can't count and it's just herb dean it's just focused on him and nothing else occasionally you see the fighter like kind of run by just like the the day the dana white like tomato face do you mean put, like yeah. a, a first person view looking directly at herb dean well like a, a camera that's just focused on him I was thinking like it would the center be, of the camera. You remember in the early aughts when music videos were still a thing and they would always have that fish eye lens 
view where you know people just kind of like sing at it or rap in front of it or whatever I don't oh know. yeah i think i remember when that that's that kind of what i was thinking it was like a just a fish eye first hand view of herb dean's face hmm. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm hoping it's cool but it i don't know it the way the ufc does some stuff it could also be terrible so we will see um i did see this thing demetrius johnson wants to prove he can be much more than an mma fighter is right, he's been doing like a lot of tournaments i think as of recently in brazilian jiu-jitsu he's 38 he doesn't seem interested yeah like i had i saw him fight one time in the entire time i've been paying attention to mma and that was at one fc yeah i mean he there was one I mean, the, I don't know why it popped into my mind immediately, but he got kneed into oblivion at, at a one fight, I think it was. But, but yeah, he, he's he's gotten some wins outside the UFC too. Like I, I think he could, he held like belts outside the UFC, and he's been winning tournaments. I mean, he's had a good run post UFC, even though they traded him. <coughs> uh, Jared Brooks, the uh, mini Jason Statham guy wants to fight mighty mouse that's not gonna go well for you it is crazy you don't see like you don't see many fighters prove to be as elite as he is for how old he is like he being 38 and still being like oh he's genuinely like one of the best in his division like that's so impressive mm -hmm. isn't he regarded as one of the best to ever do it yeah yeah 100 percent yeah, he's in most people's like top five, you know, the some Mount Rushmore as well. Yeah, I mean, he's, he was. I mean, he, he he suffered mostly from the fact that I mean, like boxing, the the lower weight classes sort of aren't aren't, aren't like uh, they don't get as, as much attention, or at least they didn't used to. That's what really made him suffer. But that I don't know. just the whole the UFC did him dirty as well a little bit. Like they didn't. Because he and he was almost a victim of his own success, which is probably not his problem, but the UFC's problem. But like, too dominant. Yeah, he 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 wiped the floor with everyone. He lapped his division twice. It's like, who's someone new that you can bring in that people are gonna think, oh wow, this could be a competitive fight? There wasn't any at the time, wasn't there? And that's why he got no, traded. No, no. Well, I in mean, part. but then as soon as he left, then you had like. Moreno showed up, and you know Figueroa mm -hmm. showed up, and Henry Cejudo, and so on and so forth. So like there were potential fights that could have happened that we didn't get to see because the UFC kind of mismanaged his yeah his career a little bit. I mean they traded him for Ben Askren, and, and that trade like went terribly uh, for the UFC. Oh, well, it, de depending on how you look at it, if you if they well, were from the Ben Askren, Askren yeah, for, yeah for the Ben Askren, Askren side, yeah. But, but they, got, they got Jorge, Jorge Masvidal. Masvidal. Yeah. Exactly. It's unfortunate, but like he, he still has done well uh, post UFC, like for his career. He's made some good money. He got beat by Moraes. Yeah, I was thinking he like recently got uh, submitted. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it was a tournament or if it was just a match or whatever. But he he did just get submitted. Um, twenty twenty one, he beat Rod Tang. Which, oh, was this when they did their mixed? The mixed rules, yeah. Was, yeah, okay. Johnson won by UD, May 23rd. Third fight with Mariah's, which, okay. that's Those have been his only fights. Been Mariah's, those are the last three. He lost split decision to Cejudo? What? Yeah, I think they fought twice. He okay. beat Cejudo the first time, and... And the second time he lost. Yeah, I wasn't gonna bring that up. I was, I was just listing them off as if they didn't fight, and I looked back <laughs> at the records like, fuck, they fought twice. <laughs> You're, the point still stands though. Like, he, there was a lot of fighters he didn't get to fight. Yeah. Fight with yeah, I, I, I would have loved to see him versus Fig and uh, Moreno. Oh my God. Him and Figgy, man. Moreno too. Yeah, that would have been a good fight. 
Uh, is let me see if there's anything. There's no other big news. Barala wants to fight Israel Adesanya. Oh, he did. That's say. good news. That's good news. Yeah, that's a good call. He's starting to realize yeah, I'd, that the, uh, the Drickus fight that. Is, is not happening. So, any news on whether Drickus is going to fight Strickland or is he going to try and do like something weird and fight Pereira instead? I mean, Dana White seems pretty adamant that he's going to fight Strickland next. Normally when, when Dana White is like, he, he doesn't even consider other options. Nobody, that's the way it's going to go. When he's determined. Ch yeah, yeah, I, I've got one thing here. This is not, this is not uh, credible at all, but Chael Sonnen says uh, that he think, or that he has an inside scoop that the UFC wants to book McGregor versus Chandler in January. Oh. That's the yeah. same scoop. That's the same guy who said uh, Aspinall would get ragdolled like R uh, Ronda Rousey. If yeah, he it is. John uh, Jones. It, it is. It is. Uh, everything that Chael Sonnen says, take it with like a, a grain of salt because he's normally wrong. But we'll, we'll see. Michael Chandler was saying that was saying that you know, you know, good things come to those who wait. M maybe he is correct on this. I'm not sure. Dana White I'm, I don't even care about that fight anymore. God. I don't even care about that fight anymore, honestly. I'll be excited for it whenever, whenever I see them walking out. Ngannou vs. Ferreira winner vs. Aspinall for the pound for pound best heavyweight. Yeah, they, they know I would never do that. No, absolutely not. In, in, a, in a perfect world, I would love to see it, but Dana White would, would never do that. He would have a breakdown. If a PFL fighter, which I mean, Nganu isn't like the normal P PFL fighter, but he would have a breakdown if Nganu beat like the UFC champ. Well, if Turkey tells him that's what he wants, that's what he's going to do. Yeah. T Turkey seems to have some type of power over Dana White. So, yeah. Money. Maybe, but maybe, but we'll see. Nganu has to win first. Because PFL is. It's funded heavily out of Saudi Arabia, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're one of the big investors. Yeah. Man, that little bit of a meandering news, but that's I think I think that's why you're all here, isn't it? <laughs> so, let's uh fucking wrap the shit up here <clears throat> for this second second half of the ultimate F and casual. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Ultimate Effing Casual. If there's something you'd like to hear more about, or you need to let us know just how casual we really are, you can text our anonymous line at 833-589-7637. If you think you're entertaining, go ahead and call and leave a voice message, and we'll see if you can make the final cut of the show. 833-LUXPODS. Can't go wrong. If you'd rather hit us up on social media, the account name is LVX Media Net. That's on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Blue Sky, and all the rest of that shit. If you can't find us, chances are because we're not on it. There's a lot of stuff that gets cut out from the final releases, like what you just heard, and it's for all kinds of different reasons. So if you want the raw audio from our lips to your ears, look us up on Patreon. LVX Media Net over there, just like everywhere else. Music by Middle of Nowhere Beats, all music used with permission. And for more shows like this one, go to lvxmedia.net. Parting words. Nathan, who are we fucking this time? Oh, I was going to be trying to be positive and say like War Marab or something like that. <laughs> War Marab. War Rob. War Rob. Yeah. War Rob. Ooh, that actually works. Those would be my parting words then. War Rob. I'm going to say I'm excited for 306. I've got like a special topic assignment just because I am like Mexican. So it'll be nice to see how they like honor like the Mexican fighting culture and getting to see like a bunch of Mexican fighters. So Canelo is I'm happening for right down the street. Yeah, I, I will have both fights up. I will have both fights up. It's simultaneously. I at this happening simultaneously. I feel like this is is this a better pay per view purchase than Canelo Berlanga? Because like even the Berlanga the Canelo card isn't very good. Unironically, yeah. 
I yeah, I'm not. I am. I do not try to conceal it at all. Like I prefer boxing ten times out of ten, but that card is garbage. And the this UFC 306 <laughs> at least has stuff on it. Yeah, well, who's who else on the Canelo fight is Rowley, Raleigh, fucking Erislandi Lara, Caleb Plant. Oh my God, Lara! I forgot about yeah, Lara. Lara versus Danny, oh, Danny Garcia. Garcia. Danny Garcia back, back again. Man, he was so he swift. cut his teeth at 140. Had a really shitty run at 147, and th- now this? We get a title shot. Yeah. At 160? Come on. Come on. This... How old is Lara, though? Uh, he's a Cuban 40. Cuban 40, okay, so... Could be 45 maybe, maybe mid... Yeah, I would say maybe mid-40s. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I feel like eventually age has to do something, but 160 for Danny Garcia, I don't know. And Lara looked sharp his last time, last time out. Yeah, um, and then Caleb Plant and versus who? That, question mark. Trey was in Trevor Coombe or McCoombe, no, something like yeah. that. I just remember he's a he's a MAGA dude or something like that. Fun. Yeah. And the only thing remotely exciting about this Canelo card is either the possibility. It's really just Berlanga getting toasted. We, we, get, a, we get another like, gift of Berlanga. The, we get a gift finally of Berlanga getting KO'd. Yeah, or like we get he gets a punch from the stars and like the one percent chance knocks out Canelo or at least knocks him down. That would be very very funny. But yeah, I mean, so I, I I saw earlier today some of the boys were talking about putting a bet on Canelo getting knocked out. Oh, the, the about, odds we're gonna are way too Bing. good. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make bank apparently. The odds and there's more news of Canelo and other tactics to avoid fighting Benavides. So that's always fun. And yeah, for a longer winning by knockout, it could put my kids through college. It really could. <laughs> it really could. Uh, so I will actually, Nathan, I'm taking the mantle. Fuck Canelo <laughs> for this. It, why? You're, you are making me do this. You're making me watch MMA instead of boxing. And I don't like you for that. It hurts my soul. At least you have Sean O'Malley to... Yeah. At least wipe your tears away. You can as, support another Mexican fighter. <laughs> as uh, David Benavides calls us finiqueros for whatever reason, for people from Phoenix, we'll adopt you, O'Malley. You're one of us now. Stay out in the sun until you stop burning and you start tanning. <laughs> That's it for the ultimate effing casual. We will be back when we're back. We'll see cool. you on the other side of O'Malley and Warab. See ya next time. Peace. Peace.